Hi, this is Ethan from Dark Zebra. Today, uh, I just have this simple WordPress site that we're going to use to create a backup of a, in our, of our Docker container and then also restore it. This WordPress site is going to have two pieces of information we need to back up. One is the WordPress data, database site, database, and the second one is the HTML files with associated uploads. And here I have this simple test page. I've got an uploaded image and this test page post, and we're gonna to need to back up both of those information. So I used fig to automate the process of starting my images, my containers. Uh, so if I go in and to a Docker PS, I, you can see that I have a web, a D to B container and a file container. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I, I've created this backups folder. It's currently empty and we are going to first back up our HTML files, which are located at var slash www slash HTML. The way we do this is that we run, and we're going to remove it to our, uh, our BusyBox image. But if you remember, we need to make sure that we have our volumes from that data store, which is called wpfig file one. And on top of that, we need to have a location to back up these files to. So we're going to do a dash V, use this command to give us our present working directory, and map it to slash backups in the host container, or in the uh, Docker container. And by just doing that command, you'll notice that I have a, a backups folder. And we're going to go in there, right? We're going to actually go into the var uh, basically get the HTML pages and all we're going to do is use tar to create so we're going to use a tar dash C with a dot to say make a tar of the local directory and dash F to say low store it in backups slash HTML dot tar and this is simply going to copy all of our files right here into a tar and then uh, they should have all the, all the permissions and everything all saved for us. And, if, and then we just exit, very simple. And now you'll notice we have an HTML.tar page. We need to do the same thing for MySQL. But this time we need to, uh, to link to our MySQL file and our image name for that is called wpfigdb1. So, Docker run, and we need to once again map the local directory into the backups folder on the container. This time we need to do a link, uh, a link to the WordPress because we need to connect to it through its file, uh, its ports. And the way we do this is just putting in the name as, as we did when we started up. Uh, and then we need to have a local alias. We're going to call it DZ. And you'll see why in a minute here. And we run the MySQL image and we're going to run the bash command inside of that. Now, if we type in ENV to give us an, our environmental variables, you'll notice that I have a bunch of environmental variables that start with DZ. When you link a container to another container, it basically provides uh, an, an infrastructure to communicate between these two things, these two containers, and Docker sets up a bunch of environmental variables to help you to know what is set on that other device, on that other container. If you remember setting it up before, we needed to have a MySQL root password. That's there, right? But it's prefaced with our alias, DZ, and the fact that it's an environmental variable. So it's DV underscore ENV underscore MySQL root password. Our ports are the same way. DZ underscore port underscore 3306. And it just gives us the TCP, the protocol, the address and everything. And to make sure that we're connecting, we can just have in MySQL root. Uh, we're gonna use this password, uh, dash P. And we're gonna say the host is DZ port and we're going to grab the TCP address for that. We're going to use the WordPress. Uh, I happen to know that the database is called WordPress, so I'm just going to type it in now. Of course, you can 
uh, enter it later if you would like. You, and you'll notice that if I do a show tables, there are all my WordPress tables there. We're going to exit out. And we're going to use a MySQL dump command. Uh, and we're going to pass in the host. Once again, I just ty start typing in DZ. And it will start helping me out here. Use the root user and we want a password. I'm going to say WordPress database, dump it into backups slash uh, WordPress.sql. And of course, you probably want to automate this at some point and do things a little better. But for right now, I'm just going through the basics of how to get to the files, back them up, and then restore them. Hit enter, enter our password. And when we go into backups, I have WordPress on its SQL. Exit it. And just to show you, it's there, and there's our entire database right there. It's really simple to back up these files. So, hope that, depending on the type of system, it's going to be a little bit different, but I hope this gives you an idea of how we access and connect to it. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually stop our application. And we're going to do something that you might occasionally have to do, which is remove it. And then we're going to do uh, an up again. I've been having some problems with WordPress and Fig that sometimes when there isn't a database installed, the WordPress container will try to connect to the database before the database is installed and it will fail. Uh, if that does happen, all we need to do, in fact, it just did happen. Um, all we have to do is just do the command again. And there it's installing. And we should have our site up. I'm going to go in and do a Docker PS, make sure that my port is the same, and it is. And you'll notice now I'm going to get the WordPress installation because I have a brand new install. Everything's there. And what we're going to do now is restore our old database. So first, we rerun that command of the Docker run. Uh, and we should have the exact same uh, container name here because we removed the old one. So I'm going to rely on that hit enter and once again connect to the database uh, our same environmental variables are there and we're going to connect to the WordPress database and we can in, how to do this in MySQL there's a lot of different ways we're just going to use the, the source command which basically says use the, the use the SQL file or the text file located at this location Hit enter and it's basically reinserting everything in the database here we're going to exit out <clears throat> and exit from our container and then we are going to rerun our our busy box connecting to the file system so it's like we're like doing everything in reverse right now uh, so I'm not very good at the tar command and I'm not gonna bother looking it up right now so we're just gonna copy this html.tar file into our var www.html directory go into that directory and we're gonna and there's our tar file right now we're going to simply untar it, extract it, verify it, and the file name. Hit enter, and basically now it's outputting everything that was in our directory before. And it probably it looks the same, but actually it's overwritten everything. So we're going to remove the tar file, exit, and then in here, uh, normally you want to start this up in background mode, but I didn't. So I'm just going to hit Control c to stop it. And we're going to restart our, our container.
And now, I don't want to be in the install. We're just going to go to the root page. You'll notice that I suddenly have my site back. If we go down the bottom here, we have our post. And I've got both the post, which was stored in the database, and the uploaded image, which was stored in the file system. So that is a very simple way to both back up files from containers and databases and then restore them later on. I would encourage you to write some images and perhaps some scripts to automate this process so that you're not doing it manually, but it's really simple. Uh, thanks for your time. Please leave comments, like the video if you, or, or just rate it, and uh, even if you don't like it, appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this Dark Zebra presentation. Please rate this video and add it to your favorites if you liked it. For additional content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at darkzebra.com.